really thrilled to welcome Sergio Mastro Giovanni, who is the head of data and innovation at Nugeral. Additionally, he's teaching intelligent automation as part of the um, Human Capital Analytics and Technology program. So, Sergio, take it away. Okay, so thanks again, Stella. Uh, we are going to share some insights about what is intelligent automation. We will divide these into sessions. Tonight, we are going to introduce some concepts. Um, we are going to start probably uh, sharing the many challenges that we are having with this COVID-19, with these shutdowns, with these uh, many verticals that were already being disrupted even, even before the situation that we are living now, and how what we call intelligent automation uh, is helping here and how uh, companies and, and everyone can take advantage from, from these many tools that we have uh, available. Uh, so we'll, we'll divide these, uh, se these sessions in two parts. Uh, tonight we'll, we'll share some uh, concepts, introduction about what we call intelligent automation, RPA, and some business implications. And next week we'll share some, we'll try to do some on hands lab where everyone can probably follow what we do and, and try to automate or to, and, and crunch your own data and play, play with that all together in order to, you know, to gain expertise and share these uh, many tools that we have available these days, some of them free or uh, uh, available to download and trial. Most of these companies are releasing these softwares um, you know, for people to try it. Uh, let me introduce myself. I, I wear many hats. I'm a data scientist, AI evangelist, and data storyteller. I'm a professor at NYU. Uh, I teach intelligent automation. I am a consultant with 20 plus years experience working with what is continuous improvement and analytics. I'm an innovation coach, entrepreneur, and also head of data and innovation at Nubira. Um, I like to start with this picture that I took myself, this is Midtown Manhattan, but you can see this scene everywhere, almost in every city, in every country in, in the world. Um, this is happening or was happening years before we were, uh, or we started with this um, situation that we are living these days. It's not the end of the, the re, of retail, but it's a situation that we see, we commonly see that retail in particular and many other uh, verticals, I, I, verticals in general are being disrupted by what we call digital companies, when, uh, companies like Amazon that were almost born digital and they are they are not winning the market because they are good or they are, they are fancy or they have a digital platform. They, they are winning the market before because they have a, an end-to-end -end digitalized operation, because they have a, an automated operation, and because they, they are very good at what they do, right? They, they are still uh, many places, many companies that, that are struggling with their operation. They are struggling, struggling to survive. And probably this situation that we are living these days expose the, the fragility of their operations even more, right? Uh, because they, they are living uh, many challenges uh, these days to, to, to operate. Uh, we see traditional business uh, that were around for decades uh, going out of business. Um, we see companies like Forever 21, Toys R Us, Sears, uh, Walmart Express, JCPenney, Sports Authority, you name it. They, they, are, uh, they are going out of business uh, because they cannot compete with a digital company, right? Um, we used to see uh, situations like this, but what these days we see is something more like this, right? Uh, some cashless economy, people we as consumers don't like uh, lines, we don't like to waste our time, we don't like, you know, go to store and spend hours funding, fun, uh, trying to find what we need. And that is, that is a, a situation that were around for probably for years. 
and again, these days are exposed more than ever, right? Uh, because people cannot go to these stores, even if they would like uh, going, right? So what is the difference between a, a digital and automated company and a traditional mortar brick uh, retail in this case? Um, and I, I, I'm choosing Walmart because it's, the, it's probably one of the uh, traditional retail that is still surviving and uh, still making money because all their competitors are, are probably out of business or, or going out of business soon. If we take Walmart, for example, they have a market cap, a value uh, of 320 billion. Again, this is before uh, COVID-19 uh, versus Amazon, 150 billion. Uh, Amazon was founded, uh, sorry, Walmart was founded in 1962, uh, more revenue than Amazon, more experience than Amazon, more employees than Amazon. However, Amazon is worth three times higher than Walmart. Why this is happening? Uh, for many reasons, Amazon, Amazon has their end-to-end -end operation completely automated. If you see videos, if you watch videos of Amazon warehouses, you'll see those robots taking the packages and, and you, you, you are going to see that their operations are, this, even their supply chain, the traditional processes like supply chain are completely automated, right? Uh, so what is the new digital uh, normal? We have many company, or companies these days grew uh, or grow, acquire, acquiring other companies. We have many silos, many informational, uh, many legacy systems, many dots not connected. And those are probably one of the biggest challenges that companies are having today, right? data culture, not having the, 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 the uh, data, the, the empowering their people, not having everyone seeing the same picture, not having the, everyone accessing the same information, not having uh, processes uh, automated. So the opportunities in centralizing, digitalizing, having online and automated processes and information accessible for decision making, empowering uh, employees, sharing information, giving everyone a voice, encouraging innovation, having, allowing people to, having, to have access to data is allowing them to innovate and challenge processes, and finally going digital and having automated processes, right? Again, uh, if you remember, uh, not these days, but if you remember walking uh, Manhattan or any city in the world, uh, you are going to see entire buildings empty, entire building, entire businesses um, going out of business, entire uh, companies not having place, even offices. They, they don't have physical offices anymore. This is the new normal. This is what we see and we are going to keep seeing from now on. Uh, this slide uh, probably um, helps understanding what we call uh, digital transformation is, is uh, the concept of having is a cultural um, shift, uh, having uh, information integrating, integrated, reliable, and automated processes, and, and also predictable, right? Uh, when we say big data, we mean collecting data from the different sources that we have uh, out there, uh, and not having people doing manual, manual work, uh, having analytics that is uh, connecting the dots and showing that information to everyone and having everyone seeing the, 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 the same information. Automation is, is uh, of course, one of the components of this equation and probably one of the most important components, right? Because we don't want, uh, we want to eliminate or reduce at least the middlemen. We are in a culture that is called D2C, that is direct to consumer. We don't want uh, middlemen because those, make, th th those middlemen make the process longer, make the process more inefficient, add more points of failure, add human error, add a complexity to the process, and also uh, make the processes more expensive, right, for the consumer. 
So why Amazon uh, succeed uh, in, in, in and won and wins the markets? No, it's not just Amazon, right? We use Amazon as an example, but we have many Amazons out there competing with the traditional uh, businesses uh, because they are a D2C uh, company. They, 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 they don't have middlemen. They have warehouses completely automated and we are not let me let me think how I say this. We are not uh, talking about ethics. Probably we can leave that conversation aside. Uh, but they don't have people in their warehouses. They, they, all their warehouses are automated, uh, are robotized. Um, so that uh, means, with that say, that um, automation makes processes uh, in, uh, efficient and faster. Right? You can have a box, the, a, a box of what you order in a couple of hours in your house, in your home, because of this type of automation and this type of economy, right? Economy 4.0. If we, you think about Uber, for example, you think about Airbnb, those are platforms or companies that connected supply and demand, no middlemen, no... That's why they succeed, and that's what that's what we consumers are looking for. Does it make sense? Yes, it does. And finally, the fourth component is uh, intelligent processes, artificial intelligence, not just for improving and optimizing the, the processes that we are writing, but, but also for predicting the next move, for predicting what's coming next, for predicting uh, what should be doing for the next uh, wave, right? For, for, for what, what is coming tomorrow. Uh, this is uh, probably the, the timeline of the, the breakthroughs, if you will, of technologies in the last century or century plus. They have a, a common denominator, the common denominator, even though some of them were supported with from previous uh, processes, but all these guys uh, saw uh, the traditional processes in a different way, right? Actually, can anyone tell me what is this? Let me, let me help you. This is obviously an elephant inside the python, inside the snake. Um, if you remember the little prince, uh, that's how he would imagine this and he would ask everyone and everyone would say, okay, that is a hat. So the, the theme, the point is that linear thinking kills innovation. We need to think uh, or, or learn thinking differently and we need to learn uh, how to be more efficient uh, in the way that we face our challenges, right? With automation and also in a different way that we are living these days. It's a digital way. We are the last generation of the hybrid uh, culture because we were born um, analog and we are going to die digital, right? Um, talking about intelligent automation basically mimics uh, how we human, humans behave. Um, basically follows the same rules that we follow when we do or we execute any process, right? That is basically, I don't know, I download the file, I copy something to another place, and then I upload this, and then I send this by email. Those are rules that we usually follow, right? And we also have the cognitive component that requires some, sometimes some kind of empathy or some conversational skills that, believe it or not, that also are being uh, or could be eventually automated. We'll see some examples soon. But basically the approach is no replace a position by a bot, no replace a worker by a, a, a bot or by, by an automated process, but basically reconstruct or deconstruct jobs or, or processes into tasks and analyze which are the tasks that can be and can and should and probably must be automated, right? For different reasons, because we have a low hanging fruit, because it's a very expensive task and we have many, many errors and so on. And also how can we uh, uh, align this process with our strategy and also optimize uh, the operation in order to put together and reinvent a new, a new process, right? 
Uh, this is a survey uh, in uh, uh, Fortune 500 companies on how they are doing with, and they are asking different questions, but basically how they are doing with uh, automation. Uh, as you can see, most of them, the black part is those that are unprepared and the uh, light gray that are these that we have at the right side are those that are fully prepared. And we have a very low percentage of companies fully prepared. And the, the, the highest is 7%. But basically the biggest challenges are these two. We have 35 and 38 that are uh, basically uh, deconstruct the jobs, identifying which are the most uh, interesting or the, which are those that should be automated. And the step number two is uh, helping our workers, helping our workforce uh, being prepared for that change. Because let's be honest, there are, there are positions that are going or are already being eliminated. And if not, they are going to be eliminated soon. We have every day, we have new positions being eliminated, every day new positions being created, but we have challenges finding or helping these uh, or those people that uh, their positions are going to be uh, eliminated. So we need to work with them. We as leaders need to work our companies on, do on that transformation in order to help uh, these people, this workforce being reskilled, right? Those are probably the two main, the two biggest challenges that companies are having these days. Um, these days we are living in a particular situation with the healthcare, yeah, the healthcare system. But if you think about that, every time that you see your doctor, you will spend 10 to 20 minutes. I, I, won't, I never spend more than 10 minutes when I see my doctor, but in general, you will spend 10 to 20 minutes with your doctor. And for that, you, it would take you 2.6 weeks on average to schedule that appointment. Plus two hours going back and forth average uh, and plus the time that you would spend waiting. I, I never understood why I need to fill those so many forms and waste 15 minutes of my time filling all those many forms every day that I see my doctor because I, they already have my information. I don't need to keep filling those forms. But anyways, that's one of the reasons this is a so inefficient three with a T trillion dollars uh, industry in the US. Uh, this is probably the most inefficient industry in the world, healthcare, talking about healthcare. So we have a huge opportunity for automation. We have uh, many articles talking about this and, and, and we have even have bots that can help us triage in, uh, the, when we have a, a you know, simple uh, uh, challenge with our health or pain or something like that. It can probably guide us through with uh, through many questions through uh, uh, what we have and how can be uh, fixed, and also explaining to us what we have and, and why we are having that uh, uh, pain. Right? Not talking about Corona, of course. Um, Eighty percent of general practitioners. Um, say that this is a, they have an excessive workload uh, that is related to uh, administrative task and also overhead and that has a direct impact in the quality of the treatment that they have uh, with patients right uh, 12 million uh, uh, of people annually are misdiagnosed and a quarter uh, of those misdiagnoses are life threatening so 3 million people die every year because they are misdiagnosed. 86% of that inefficient 3 trillion uh, is to treat chronic uh, illnesses. 25% of, of that, those 3 trillion are related to administrative overhead. That is a very good candidate for uh, intelligent automation, right? What we call overhead, we, it means repetitive manual tasks, filling, filling patient reports, calling patients for appointment reminders, calling insurance companies to authorize procedure, filling paperwork, post procedures, and so on. But it's 25% of that, those $3 trillion, right? Administrative overhead is choking the healthcare industry. This is a very good, interesting problem for automation, right? Let's go back to, to automation. Um, we have three different uh, variables that we can 
probably be, uh, analyze when we are uh, going to deploy or we uh, are analyzing our processes, right? Repetitive versus variable. When we have repetitive tasks, those that are done over and over and over and over, those are very good candidates and actually the low hanging fruit for RPA or any uh, automation strategy. Independent versus interactive. When we have independent processes that they don't talk to, to uh, another process, they are also very good candidate for, for automating and actually should be automating. Same with physical versus mental. When we say physical, we don't mean only what is physical strength. We also mean manual processes that are done manually or someone typing something or someone doing some manual work that can be also automated and probably should also be automated, right? And we identify, we have three different type of automation. What is RPA, the, that is the most popular, that is actually is the most, the low hanging fruit, that is, it takes care for, of, of the a high volume and a high repetition uh, processes. Then we have cognitive automation, that basically what it does is following patterns and following trends uh, and try to mimic our decision making. And finally, social robotics, like what we talk about Amazon, that are those uh, processes completely automated. Uh, and we have entire plants, in, entire manufacturing plants with no people, right, in Japan, for example. And if we think about uh, ATM, in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, actually, the impact was, uh, if we analyze the, 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 the 20 years, the first 20 years of their life, um, actually the number of human tellers increased when we deploy, started deploying ATMs, right? In 1985, we have 60,000 ATMs and 485,000 tellers. In 2002, we have 352,000 ATMs and 527,000 tellers. New jobs created, more, uh, more bank branches, automated, efficient, cheaper operations and customer service, and the number of transactions increase, right? Uh, there's a reality, right, these days. Actually, I don't remember when, was, when, when it was the last time I went to a bank, probably years ago. The, the, the reality is, as we talk when we started this conversation, the reality is that we, as consumers, we as customers, we don't want to go to places, right? We want to do everything online. We want to uh, do our bank transactions through our phones. That may probably last years decrease the number of branches. Uh, and more than 8,000 uh, bank branches close in the US uh, and 150 per state. Uh, and more, uh, more than 90% of transactions now take place online. That is another reality not related to the ATM. But today we have hybrid banks with teller helping customers via video conference. And the most interesting part of this is that the number of employees uh, has remained the same since probably in the last 20, 25 years. That is around two, two million. That is a fact, right? It um, helps reducing the human error. Imagine in the, Let's travel back in time. We are in the 80s and we have uh, these uh, employees counting physically the money. We have many opportunities for human errors, right? And, and also that is not, I, I can tell, that is not a task that someone would enjoy doing, right? Uh, so this actually enhanced the, the type and quality of work that people do uh, people, uh, and also uh, uh, sometimes augment uh, and, and uh, improve the, the work and, and what we do uh, actually, right? Maria Rivera uh, asked, um, why do you think the numbers stayed at the same level and didn't change as much? Um, actually, what, what, what the banks uh, did in the last 10 years, let's say, is reducing the number of employees at each branch, but opening branches almost everywhere. Probably in the 80s, we would have one branch per city, and in, in, in the 90s and 2000s, we would have, I don't know, more than 10 branches, not per, not per city, but 
per neighborhood. You would have a chase every two blocks. So the, I think that the number in the 80s was 20 employees per branch. And in the, in, in the upcoming years, we, we would have a, around 10 or 13 employees per branch, but many branches open, even though they are closing. That is a reality. They, they are closing as when we talk about retail because uh, the, the, traditional, uh, the traditional operations and, and the traditional verticals are being disrupted by digital businesses. We do and we transact digitally. We buy from via Amazon, we bank via your mobile app, uh, but they are still remaining almost the same, decreasing obviously not, not probably in the upcoming years is, uh, are going to be less than 2 million because probably the uh, traditional branches are, are going to be disappearing uh, because people don't go to, to, to the bank physically unless you have a very big problem that you cannot solve uh, uh, with your mobile app or online platform, you, would, you wouldn't go to the bank. Uh, same with the supermarket, same with any grocery that you would do um, even before Corona, right? Uh, these days are probably more exposed than ever. But uh, anyways, we as consumer realize that you don't need to go to physically to any store anymore. You can do everything from your home, from your computer, from your mobile app, from your phone. You don't even need to travel. We, we learn and we are learning that uh, at least for business that you can have meetings uh, almost face to face like if you will uh, without traveling uh, hours or days to see or to meet someone right this is the new normal again one more time and this came and this is like this is going to keep being like this probably forever right we need to deal with that even if we like it or not so let me move uh, forward and let's try to cover everything. What we cannot cover tonight, we'll, we'll uh, leave it for next week. Um, again, when we are deploying an automa automation strategy, we need to analyze, um, instead of saying, I'm going to replace this worker, I'm going to replace this process, we need to rather open that process into tasks the different tasks that, uh, that uh, 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 each process uh, has and analyze the different components, right? And analyze based on these uh, three or many, maybe more, but basically how uh, repetitive is, how independent is, and how physical is. Uh, so understand where the low hanging fruit is. And probably when we have something like greeting a customer uh, that is repetitive because the worker, the teller would do that every day, every hour, every minute, every time that the new customer uh, enters the, the, the branch and so on. It's something, it's something interactive because they probably would have a chat with the customer with a, 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 and also mental because it doesn't require any strength. Um, same when we have other, other tasks like probably pro processing the request for, for, for cash, let's say, is something independent because it doesn't have any, any relationship with other tasks uh, and so on. So we can, we can probably do in this analysis, understand where is the low hanging fruit, what can be automated, where, where, what is the payoff and what we should actually automate, right? Everything that is related to manual work, everything that is related to a repetitive task that we do over and over and over and over and over. we don't need actually it's not worth it and and the the worker doesn't enjoy doing that work right um another point is what we call the return on improved performance roip meaning what is the payoff of uh, every every task that we perform? Let's say that, for example, greeting customer, uh, receiving customer requests for cash. We want to avoid mistakes. We don't want a human being counting that cash, uh, uh, wasting her time, and also counting, uh, allowing her uh, 
having errors in that, giving more money to the customer, giving less money to the customer. So we want to avoid mistake. That is a huge payoff, right? Uh, processing uh, the, the request for, for, for checking account or things like that. We want to be uh, accurate. We want to avoid mistakes. We want to create value, probably recommending uh, um, uh, an upselling or recommending more services to the, to the customers and, and things like that. So this is an important component also when we are analyzing if we should uh, automate a task or not, right? Uh, actually, it, it, it has different levels. It can be split in four levels based on the performance and the value that is created uh, for the organization. The first, the first part is uh, what we want to do is, is avoiding errors, right? We, we, we want to avoid the negative value. We want to avoid errors. The second part, we want to standardize the process. We want not to have a variability, not, not ups and downs. We have a, a, a task being done the same every day, every time that we perform it. Then we have the third component that is the incremental value. When we start uh, having value for, for the company, for example, when we have a, a, a call center agent uh, cross-selling something or offering something to the customer, that is when we have a, 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 linear, a linear value uh, uh, on, on, the, on, uh, on this uh, task. And finally, the exponential value that is when, when the breaks, uh, breakthroughs uh, happen, right? When we are creating something exponentially higher than what we, what we are doing, right? Uh, so, um, for example, if we compare Starbucks with McDonald's, McDonald's very traditional burger, fast food company, what they do is, always selling the same and they want, they don't want uh, the customer to waste time. They don't, they want to do deliver a fast uh, food for, for the customer. And they both have a similar process, right? They have in attendance, uh, dealing with customers, counting money, creating or cooking, if you will, food and delivering food for the customer, right? But McDonald's more standard process, they do the same every day. Uh, and they actually have numbers for the meal to avoid mistakes, to avoid the, the attendants, uh, the cashier having mistakes. They have, even the customers sometimes ask for the meal number one, the combo three and, and things like that. Starbucks on the other hand, have, are more willing to make, they actually have baristas that are opera singers or, or, or things like that. They are willing to uh, cater the customer and give more uh, value to the customer. That's why they, they, their uh, products are so expensive because you are not paying five bucks for a coffee because the coffee is good. You are paying for a service. Actually, Starbucks is, they want to be the third place between your home and, and your office, right? So they are more willing to invest uh, in this type of, of, of services. Uh, and they actually have many breakthroughs sometimes, right? They can actually, uh, you know, lose money because uh, they can sometimes can have customers that don't like that, that service. They just want a coffee and leave and they don't want to waste time listening to a barista a singing, right? But that's basically the, the difference and, and the return on uh, improvement, uh, improved processes, right? Sure, yeah. If we go back, yes, go ahead. Do you have an example, if you go back a page, do you have an example of what it might look like to have a negative organizational value? For example, let's say that a, a customer doesn't like a, having an opera singer in Starbucks. They would grab th their coffee and leave and don't come back again to Starbucks because they, they are not willing to pay five bucks for listening uh, a stupid guy singing. Uh, they prefer going to, I don't know, Dunkin' and get a coffee for two bucks instead of five and, and, and grab the coffee quickly and leave in five minutes. Your point, uh, McDonald's is a perfect example because they've got those automated teller machines now that are three times slower than actually going and speaking to someone. Probably, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, going back to the ATM and we are almost on time, I want to leave some time, some minutes for, for, for questions. Anyways, this is not a lecture, uh, guys. Feel free to, to give me your comments or, or questions at any point. Uh, we go back to the, uh, to the ATM. Uh, this is an analysis that you need to do 
uh, every time that you are uh, analyzing uh, uh, an automation strategy, right? It's not just where is the payoff, but also what is the value for the for the uh, employee and what what type of uh, automation is a good candidate for that, right? If you are greeting a customer, probably an NLP or some type of cognitive. It, conversational uh, task or, 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 or bot is a good, eventually a good candidate for replacing that teller chatting with the customer, right? And that is actually going to augment the, the type of uh, quality of, of the employee. How, however, if we talk about uh, cash uh, and counting money and, and things like that that are repetitive, interactive, but they should substitute the work that an employee does, right? An RPA is probably a very good candidate for that. Same with verifying the account, the balance of the customer. We want to avoid mistake and also an RPA is a very good candidate. Processing a request. Also, we want to avoid the, uh, uh, mistakes and that would substitute the, the work or the labor that an employee would do and so on, right? Does it make sense? If we talk about again, let's let's put ourselves in the shoes on the shoes of the customer, right? Yeah, yeah. And the customer sometimes don't like to chat with someone, a human being. Yeah. <laughs> that is a reality, right? You just want to go to the bank. Let's suppose that you still go to the bank, or let's suppose to you go, you are hungry and want a burger or want a sandwich or want some food. You don't want to uh, engage in a conversation with someone unless you go to a bar and you want to stay there for hours and, and, and you might be willing to have a conversation with the with bartender or, or the, the, the server or someone there. Uh, you usually, if you want someone to consume some, something, if you are hungry, you, you want your burger, you want to, to sandwich and Keep, keep doing what you, you are doing, right? You, you are not willing to engage in a conversation. Probably in the bank, example the same, if we are, we would be in the 80s again. Um, so yeah, yeah, that is what the customer needs, no, no, not what we want, right? And that's true, that's sometimes unfair, that's sometimes, I'm not saying that that is nice or, or that should or would happen or needs to be happening. But that is a truth. Uh, again, we as customers don't want to waste our time. That is a, that is a fact. Uh, that's why retail is going out of business. It's not because Amazon is, a, is evil and, 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 and Macy's is good. This is because this is a new generation. This is a new digital culture. And we need to embrace that. And, and that's it, right? We need to deal with that. And that is the new normal, right? Um, also, when we talk about this, and again, that is my data science background, we need to think about the data, the type of data that we are working with. If we are working with some structured data, that is the, the, the data that we would have in databases, uh, probably RPA is the best solution. If we are talking about we are talking about unstructured data, meaning not just the information that we have in our databases, but also the information that we have in conversation, conversations, internal conversations of our employees, external conversations of our, uh, our customers, our competitors, what social media is saying about us, what media is saying about us, what press is saying about, about us. We need to capture that information too, and we, we need to do probably some cognitive automation work there, right? Um, then the third component is the social robotics. Um, I, I won't spend time with, uh, on this. You probably saw these videos many times, but our entire, again, entire warehouses, entire manufacturing plants, uh, completely automated with no human interventions. These machines, uh, this is a human noise like in Star Wars or something like that, but they are entire, en entire, uh, warehouses, entire operations uh, done by this type of components, right? Actually, Amazon, again, going to that example, I can take other examples, but they are testing supply chains, uh, uh, deliver uh, uh, shipping by this type of, 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 of uh, robots, right? Uh, actually talking about, you know, we, we have self-driving cars since 
I think that was 2014 or something like that. They are not, we are not having these guys out there in the street walking free on the streets because we have many regulations uh, still uh, out there. It's, it's more for a compliance uh, fact than uh, because we we don't have or we cannot have uh, some uh, deliver some delivery by this type of, of, of devices, if you will, right? Uh, this is this is the new normal. We have these uh, these devices uh, already out there, uh, and again, the, to wrap up because we are almost on time. Um, the automation payoff is uh, agility cost. Uh, innovation and also the customer looking for companies or looking for buy to sell their money to companies that are uh, digital and that are automated, right? Um, in the past, we would have this, uh, we would have uh, processes, we would have different systems in, in, in between what we call the technical debt and we call the organizational debt that is people doing those or filling those gaps uh, manually. These days we have a digital workforce and human workforce coexisting, work, working together. And this, again, this moment exposed more than ever this uh, situation and, and also this opportunity. This is not something replacing human workers. This is something that uh, can do the jobs because people uh, cannot go to their offices for different reasons or even because they, they are working for, they, they don't have, the, they, they are at home sick or even the, they don't have the ability to go to the office and so on. That's why we see these entire buildings empty and that's, that's what, what is happening. And basically what RPA does is something like this, basically following a recipe like when, we, when you are cooking, you are full there, you, you, you log to the system, open the Excel file, copy the three values from column A to column D and, and, and that's how it works. That's basically what RPA does. Cognitive automation takes this to the next level and includes also some uh, NLP and some other uh, patterns that, that this type of software can, can follow. Can be used for, for uh, sales, can be used for procurement, onboarding, offboarding, payroll, resume screening, IT processes, and so on. Um, okay, myth of the, let, let's, let's leave there. I want to probably leave you couple of minutes for any questions with this takeaway from this book. Uh, elimination, automation, delegation and liberation, that is probably the most interesting part of this book, right? And there are no magic wands, everything needs to be, needs work and we need to invest time for, for, for any strategy that we uh, want to follow. Next week we are going to be working with all tricks. Yeah. There are a few. So a first question from Zane, what industries and types of work are less prone to being impacted by this change in work? You reviewed healthcare, it seems that components of it would have to remain physical rather than digital. Uh, healthcare is a low hanging fruit. Uh, we, we know that there are already companies disrupting mm -hmm. the healthcare uh, industry. There are already uh, uh, mobile apps triaging, allowing people to see, uh, even even having uh, or connecting with real doctors using your phone uh, with a video conference and so on. But if you think about that, there are I don't I don't have the number exact number in my in my head, but there are like one doctor every thousand people, uh, something like that. There are there are very challenged see uh, areas like rural areas that they don't have access to to see doctors there are mobile apps like that can literally diagnose glaucoma for example people would put with using computer vision would put their phones on their eyes and that would diagnose when when people need a treatment or a, a, a for that there are many uh, apps uh, already disrupting the, the the healthcare system they are very experimental they, they you know, we still need time, but that is the low hanging fruit, right? Again, $3 trillion, the most expensive healthcare system in the world, $3 trillion can, can be ready to be disrupted, digitalized and automated, right? We don't need to keep filling those forms when you visit your doctor. Yeah. And um, Beverly is asking, do you see an impact of this pandemic? It will speed up the transition to automation or not? We are already seeing the transition to automation. And my, my, my company, what we do is uh, uh, 
digital transformation. We used to take this process. It used to take months, if not if not years. Now I saw, I personally saw and work uh, with uh, digital transformation for some companies in, in weeks. That is be because uh, first they don't have the people, second they have uh, all all the components of the company are aligned. Sometimes these processes are more cultural than technical and they usually or not usually but sometimes fail because they rely or even in consultants or in IT departments or in some particular genius that they leave everything the, the, okay transform a company and it, it doesn't work like that you know you need you need this is a cultural shift this is something that needs work there are no magic wants and everyone needs uh, to work and everyone needs to be on board right yeah um, Olivia is asking, do you believe robots can successfully replace some waiters, waitresses in the food and beverage industry in the next few years? Um, I mean, even for some types of um, conservative restaurants who need waiters and delivery food, not just for the fast food chains. Let me give you a sad but true uh, news. Uh, this is already happening. We have uh, places, we have airports. I think that is London. I was in London and you have a, a completely with no people, right? You order your food and you have like a tray uh, delivering your food. Uh, there are hotels completely robotized and, and you would order something, you would ask for room service for Know, sandwich, a Coke, whatever you order, and you will have a, a robot, for like like in Star Wars, uh, uh, coming to your door and delivering, like a, a, a human waitress, giving you your food, right? That is already happening. Uh, people, I don't know, there are people that might like it, there are people that might not, there are people that would like to engage in conversation with the, with the human being, Probably I cannot imagine a, a, a bartender at the other side of the bar giving me a beer. I would probably like to see it, a people and probably engage in a conversation, usually when I have time. But I probably would, would you go to a place that would come a, a robot with my food. I probably would do it. I don't know if everyone would like to see that. But again, this is just the beginning. Right? In, the, in the close future, that is happening. I have no doubt. This is already happening, by the way. Um, there are two last questions and, and we will close. So one is on the ethical uh, implications and considerations of automation. And then uh, give us a positive news. Uh, is there a specific industries or jobs that are less prone? Yes, uh, there are, again, there are every day are, are new, new positions being created. Um, uh, there are new, uh, New, new roles being created because the traditional businesses are changing. Uh, we, we are having new businesses. We are having positions like, I don't know, not everything related, especially related to data, right? A position that we didn't have a chief data officer five years ago uh, or 10 years ago. We didn't have a compliance, uh, a, a data compliance uh, a, a analyst five years ago. Uh, Every, every day new positions are being created. And, and uh, again, and I have hope that this is not something that uh, is going to put everyone uh, unemployed. Uh, but I also need to say this, we as leaders need to walk our companies and need to walk and help and support our employees to gain new skills because their jobs are being replaced. We, we, we cannot fight that. Uh, that is a true, that is a reality, and we need to help them uh, finding or improving their skills, right? Mm 